the entire affair, blaming a Russian intelligence service for what to me seems like uh, just an act by an individual or group of individual hackers uh, is, I think, a, a huge uh, error and sets a very bad precedent for relations between governments. The standard of proof should be much higher before one government blames another. And it's certainly possible that Russian hackers were involved. I'm not denying that. Uh, what I believe is uh, not does not make any sense is that the Russian intelligence services were involved. And I think that's why you've invited me because of this little clue that th this one spear phishing email originated from Yandex, your uh, leading Russian company. So th this is a th there. So there are two issues with that. One is that it's not from Yandex.ru, which would be the easiest way for somebody in Russia to create an email address on Yandex. It's from Yandex.com, which would be more for people like me that don't speak Russian, but want to have an email address on with that particular Russian company. So what struck me when I first saw this bit of evidence was, well, why would a Russian intelligence service use Yandex at all? In other words, why would any intelligence service anywhere in the world do a secret operation and, and do it from their, their own servers or from a company in their own country or use tools that have already been attributed to Russian developer or, or leave any other obvious clue. It just doesn't make any sense. But particularly that this email address was created with, in Yandex.com, the only person that would have the motivation to do something like that is a non-Russian speaker, which suggests to me that there are people involved here that have nothing to do with Russia or the Russian government. I agree with you. You know this field quite well, but it really seems as if, if, if this is the only particular point that people are talking about, then it's pretty weak. I mean, what if I just created an email address at Gmail and said, I am not the CIA at gmail.com. I mean, does that prove I'm not the CIA or I am, you know, the CIA? I mean, I, I don't know. There has to be other data points, IP addresses or other tools that people could use to be able to definitively figure it out, right? Well, no, and that's the problem. There aren't any, there, are, there is literally no technical indicators that are definitive. Everything can be spoofed. I've written about this extensively on uh, medium.com. I've looked at a lot of the different arguments. And when it comes to the technical side of this, anything, anybody anywhere in the world can make it appear to be uh, somebody else. They can use tools that were created by someone else. They can use servers and countries that are not their own. So the technical evidence is always going to be insufficient. The bottom line here is that there is already a great deal of tension between the Russian government and the US government over matters that have nothing to do with the Democratic National Committee or the US election. And so my fear is that individuals, whether they are Russian speaking or not, have taken advantage of this to create further, even further tension between these two governments. We really cannot afford any further tension. So my advice is for private individuals not to waste time on making claims that are essentially guesswork that one nation state is responsible for an attack. Leave that to the individual governments to sort out. It is, it is not the area for private for-profit companies to, to engage in. You know, you raised a couple of interesting points there. You talked about tensions between the U.S. and uh, Russia at the governmental level. After that, you, you discussed basically guesswork and you talked about uh, various, I, I don't know, there, it essentially comes out to, to being talking points and those talking points really fit into what, um, you know, really fit into what the DNC is putting out there. And, you know, maybe they're true, maybe they're not. But at this point in time, they've really crafted their message to fit into their political, you know, agenda. With that said, you know, the DNC, okay, they were hacked. I don't think anybody's disagreeing about that. But if I remember back to the summertime, they didn't go to the FBI. They didn't go to the CIA. They didn't go to the NSA. They went to a private for-profit company. I believe it was Counter-Strike. I mean, why didn't they go to a counterintelligence group if they believe they feel they've been hacked at a state level? I'm sure that they did call the FBI, but it's not the FBI's job to investigate a uh, for a private company. So the FBI will investigate if there's if it's a criminal matter in this case, it was for whatever reason they they chose to uh, to do their investigation and not actually issue any sort of criminal go after any criminal charges and the and CrowdStrike, which was the for profit company, that is in 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 our country that is what businesses do. They'll hire for profit companies like CrowdStrike to come in and do the data forensics and the incident response. What they don't, what, you know, what is not part of of the package is to uh, assign blame to a foreign government. 
government. That's not CrowdStrike's job. That's not my job. It's it's nobody's job or business except the individual government. That's the entire point. All of a sudden, if you have a for-profit group or if you have a, a, a private enterprise and they in turn go to another for-profit group, how is it possible to allege that you know uh, Russia is playing into state security service? It becomes an intelligence issue. And that was really a lot of the hype that was around there. They said that all of a sudden, you know, it's, uh, you know, U.S. security matters and, and so on and so forth. But I didn't see any intelligence agencies that stepped forward and said, yes, it is true. We're looking into this. It was just, uh, again, it was one of these talking points that sounds good. But when you dig into it, you know, the depth just isn't there. That's right. That's exactly right. When you dig into it, it, it falls apart. And, you know, even it wasn't necessarily even that, that the DNC was hacked. Assuming that an intelligence agency in Russia was responsible for that, that's just, that's nothing more than an act of espionage. That's that's what we all do. The NSA does it. Every country in, in the world engages in cyber uh, espionage activities as part of their mission. So there's really nothing wrong with that. What the U.S. government took offense at was the idea perpetrated by CrowdStrike and by ThreatConnect and by other cybersecurity companies in the U.S. that this was more than that, that this was uh, the release of the documents to WikiLeaks in an attempt to influence an election. So now you not only have to show that Russia was responsible for the hack, you then also have to show that Russia was responsible for this subtype of, of operation, an influence operation meant to change the course of the U.S. election. And now you're just in, you know, Alice in Wonderland territory. You know, my take on this is, is pretty easy. Number one, the original statement from, from CrowdStrike said, it, it was also one of these sounds good stories, but, um, you know, when you look into it, it falls apart. They said, only our files on, on Trump were hacked, the actual donor data, and, and everything that's important, oh, that's still safe. You know, nothing to see here. It was just a, a small amount of, of information that was pertaining to attack files on Trump. Those were taken. But talking about influencing the elections here, look, Regardless of, of how this message got out there, this revealed the, the bad behavior of people at the very top that were conspiring to effectively, you know, move the discussion in, in ways that it naturally wouldn't have gone. That, that is what these emails were about. And so if you say it's yeah. influencing the elections, they were already doing that. And just because right. their bad behavior was revealed, that doesn't change it. Well, the thing is, is that it's OK if we influence our own elections. It's not OK if another government tries to influence our elections. I mean, that's the thing. And frankly speaking, I think that story is ridiculous as well. I don't think that Mr. Putin really cares who takes the office of president. You know, he'll be dealing with whoever it is. And that's just the reality of, of, of politics and international diplomacy. But to actually, you know, mount not one, but two intelligence operations, because that's what CrowdStrike was claiming, that literally two different Russian intelligence agencies were in the DNC at the same time and didn't know each other was there. And to use up those resources especially during a time when at least one of those agencies, the GRU, was going through a lot of changes over the past few years. It's just, and to do it be, when, when one candidate has almost zero chance of winning, the whole thing is just, you know, ludicrous. And yet uh, it has become a very compelling story that just kept getting repeated and repeated and repeated. And now, unfortunately, it, it resulted in an, an official uh, notice, you know, from one government to another. You hit the nail on the head there. When you have the story, okay, you know, people put out stories every day, but this one just built upon itself and it built upon itself. And the real troubling aspect of it is that after the elections, that animosity and those stories won't go away. They're out there, you know, and, and then what do you do with it? I agree. Frankly, I don't know what's going to happen um, between now and the election. I hope that um, it does not escalate. And But what worries me is that uh, we have set a precedent. So on the basis of extremely weak, extremely weak, in some cases, not even uh, evidence not even in existence, the U.S. government has formally accused the Russian government of this activity. And that sets the bar very low when it comes to establishing state control over non-state actors. So this could turn around and hurt the U.S. government later because another country could say, you know, we are now accusing the U.S. government of doing something on the basis of very weak evidence or evidence that's at least as compelling as the one used to make this judgment against uh, the Russian government. So, you know, we're really we've re we've really created, I think, a dangerous precedent here. And I'm hoping that at some point in time, this either gets reversed or at least is acknowledged as, as something that should not be considered as a precedent.